welcome and welcome back to the Wrestling with the Faith podcast, everybody. Um, we're a group of everyday people get together to discuss a passage from the Bible and wrestle with what that means in today's modern day life. Uh, my name is Evan. I'm joined as always by Dave and Laurel. And we're also joined by a guest this week, Philip. Uh, Philip, thank you for, for joining us. And this week we are going to be discussing Amos uh, 7, uh, chapter 7, 7 through 15. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I'm setting a plumb line along my pe- among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword, I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you in the very heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all his words, for this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile, away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer. Go back to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy any more at Bethel, because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I was a shepherd, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Yeah, this is why I really don't like the new, the Old Testament very much. You know, it's, it's got a little weird. Yeah, you know, I was looking at some of the other verses for for next Sunday, and some of them I, I felt like this one would cause some more conversation, <laughs> a little more discussion, a little more wrestling <laughs> for us. I mean, so this go this is one of those same old. Um, uh, the person gets sent to another land or gets sent to some part of the land and gives a bad message to a very powerful person. And I'm still always amazed that the king doesn't kill the person that brought the message, you know, really shoot the messenger. I, I, it amazes me every time you know, there's one of these stories and it's, you know, uh, you know, someone going and, and uh, saying that, you know, you're in trouble and, uh, and the king just says, okay, well, go back to your homeland. Let's do that, or at least, you know, where in some cases they'll imprison them to try and kind of get where they're coming from. But yeah, I mean, and, and part of me, when I, when I was looking through the readings and found this, too, was making me think with, you know, with modern day life, you get a lot of people, and especially, especially with politics, where if you say something that other people don't like, they're trying to always bring it back to, you know, something like this from, from the Bible, of, you know, you know, if, if we're saying something and the big guy doesn't like it, then, well, it must be true or the right thing or something like that. Well, it's uh, prophets. Prophets weren't doing it for money in the day. And a lot of times they really weren't doing it willingly, meaning they didn't really want to do this, but they were compelled by God, because the consequence for not doing it for them was far worse than doing it. And and you see with Amos, he was like, he says that at the end, I didn't ask to do this. I, I take care of trees. I take care of sheep. <laughs> I am not someone important, but someone important sent me. Yeah, out, out of the comfort zone, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so something else I think is cool about this reading is that they were using plumb lines all the way back in those days. Isn't that amazing? I had to look up what plumb line. Yeah, gravity is great. <laughs> gravity, yeah. Gravity, gravity is great. You know, that's the lesson <laughs> I think of this. Gravity is great. <laughs> physics for for all of our our physics loving folk <laughs> listening in. 
I mean, yeah, and, and the fact, you know, you make all those analogies of, you know, Jesus was kind of the plumb line to us, or is the plumb line to us. And he, he's, you know, like that gravity, he's pulling us in the, and guiding us in the right direction. Well, and plumb lines are designed to keep things straight. Uh, uh, it's, it's not measuring the bottom whether the bottom is level, it's measuring is the wall going to be straight, plumb, and um, and so and with a wall, then you do get a dividing line. So he is using that as an analogy to this is drawing a clear line this way, and it's going to divide. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like mm -hmm. um for all of these episodes we've recorded, it seems like a pretty constant theme of God having to straighten us out again because uh, <laughs> we're going off in the wrong direction. And, uh, and sometimes in the New Testament, that's Jesus saying to the people who think they've got it all figured out, yeah, you really don't have it all figured out. You ought to be going a different direction. Uh, and then this is, this is you know, kind of God saying the same thing through Amos that, you know, clearly Israel was going the wrong direction at the time. And so, I mean, do we, I mean, it, it can be harder to tell in the moment, but I guess, is there something that we would see in, in you know, what, what we're experiencing today or in recent memory um, that that is us kind of going astray that, you know, and is there something that it, we may not recognize, but could be, you know, God and Jesus straight trying to, pull us back on the right track or straighten us out. Yeah. I, I, uh, I wonder often about going the wrong direction and is God pulling me back or am I, or is it usually it's Laurel actually pulling me back, but, <laughs> but um, uh, so I'm always wondering, you know, why is that, you know, you know, how did I get so far over here when really, and then, or sometimes when you think you're completely right, and you're going down the road and you're completely right. And all of a sudden it hits you that you're completely wrong. And you're wondering how long have I been going down the wrong direction um, to get to this spot? Yeah. One of the thoughts that comes to my mind is that he's making a proclamation that they're going to go into exile and it's a whole community. And so when you ask this question about what might be the modern day uh, takeaway, I, I gravitate towards the issue of what is it saying to the community what is it saying to the larger body, not just me individually? And, uh, you know, again, not, uh, I'm not trying to make anything political, but I think one of the things the pandemic has done is shown us what do we, how do we look collectively at ourselves and our society? And how do we, how do we find that compassion that, that really was exemplif Jesus exemplified compassion to the lost, to the, those who were in need. And, um, and I think that, you know, the, the pandemic gives us the opportunity to ask, are we, were we compassionate in the image of Christ? Yeah, because I know, I mean, obviously I've seen plenty of division even amongst, you know, at work people grumbling with, you know, masks and vaccines and all that, where, you know, in my mind, doing that, is, well, wearing the mask and then getting the vaccine as early as I could was, okay, yeah, I want to, I mean, okay, yeah, there's the selfish part of I want to protect myself, but, you know, it's also thinking, hey, if I do this, I can help protect others. It's one kind of small thing I can do. Um, but then you also see, I mean, even, even before the pandemic, you have all the, you know, the homeless and those that are struggling that mm -hmm. they probably got, I mean, I, I don't, see it myself because um, I'm just you know I, I'm not exposed to it as much but they probably were hit harder with all that everything that's going on and will continue to be uh, you know the the issue of housing uh, the you know the, the moratoriums on uh, uh, evictions is still being held but people are facing that and that and I, so I agree. I just used the example of the pandemic, but it's the larger issues that precede the pandemic will last beyond the pandemic. How do we, how do we view uh, people within our community and how do we view our role within our community? And um, how does that exemplify Christ? I know that the, 
the scripture is not referencing Christ, but it does point to some characters of Christ, characteristics of Christ, uh, as David alluded to earlier. So. so, so think about this when it comes to the other thing we learned, I think, in the pandemic was that, man, our priorities were a little off. And mm -hmm. so you think about, um, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that really bothered us that we couldn't do. And you think about the real importance of some of that was really, and it wasn't as fun, right? You know, I get that, but, but, you know, you ended up spending a lot more time with your family and a lot, and sometimes forced where you were like, uh, if I'm going to strangle my family member, which really tells you, you know, that maybe our priorities have been a little off because there's always something to distract us in life, as opposed to, you know, trying to become uh, closer with the people we love. And, and so, you know, I, I, maybe it was a, you know, a way that we can all look back at that and say, hey, this is the plumb line that actually, you know, we should have been looking at all along. And, and now maybe, you know, I know I've talked to a lot of people who have said since then they really uh, do not take things for granted that they used to take for granted and, uh, and, and really enjoy the time that they have. Yeah, I've heard people say that too, definitely realized, you know, what things are important. And like you said, what things we missed was being with family members and, you know, not wanting to give them sick so we didn't get together. And um, yeah, what's really important in life, I think that's taught us some of those things. Okay, now let's let's clarify that I am certainly not saying that God shut the pandemic to straighten right. us out. I was going to say that too. But I, that would be an Old Testament I way of looking at things, so. wouldn't it? That's what Old <laughs> Testament people would say, right? People of the old uh, fire and brimstone of God sent the pandemic so we could get our act together and care about our families more. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know. Yeah, you because know, I mean, that, that's obviously, that's definitely been something we've talked about, I think, on a couple of occasions before. Yeah, I mean, and it, it is like, I, I know, you know, I've definitely heard some people that try, that have said, you know, yeah, this is, maybe this is God trying to slap us across the wrist, like, get your act together, guys. Um, which you, you never want to think, I mean, obviously, you read the Old Testament, but you, you want to think, especially after the New Testament, that's not something that mm -hmm. he's going to do to us. Um, but, I mean, it, it certainly is. I mean, both those closest to us, and I would like to think that in, in a lot of cases, too, I mean, obviously spending that more time getting closer to those around us, but then being more empathetic for those that even we, that we don't know, strangers, whether they're you know, in a, in a good position, similar positions to any of us or those that are less fortunate. I, I'd like to think that a lot of people, a lot of us, you know, became more empathetic towards their struggles too throughout all of this. Started to value the human life a bit more. So, you know, one of our constant themes we've had on these is, is when we kind of figure it out, when we think we're right and we're actually wrong. And so when I think of, when I look back and look at the plumb line scenario, you know, if you put a plumb line down and you really, uh, and you see that just, you know, in just like a few feet, you can be a little off and not notice. But then over time, as you look along that plumb line, you could really see that how far off you can go if you're just angled in the wrong way. And we've talked, you know, many times on this about how, you know, some Christians kind of feel like they've got it all right and they've already got, they've got to figure it out. And it's really not until they look back and start to realize how far away from, from the faith that, or maybe the true version of the faith or whatever that might look like, uh, that they are. And, and I've done that in my own life many times where we thought we had to figure it out. And then all of a sudden I'm like, boy, that's just not really, I reread a passage or I, I, or some pastor got up and started saying something. I'm like, I never knew that. I think uh, the best, the clearest example of this I think of is the, the Noah story, where I always thought the Noah story was just Noah running away and not wanting to do what he wanted to do. And he was, because he was, Noah, I'm sorry, um, Jonah, Jonah yeah. where he was <laughs> just running away, didn't want to, didn't want to go preach because he just was scared to go to Nineveh or whatever. And that's the real message of the story. I never really figured out that the real reason is because he didn't want Nineveh to be saved because he was, mm -hmm. you know, that was, and I never knew that about the story because I always had my kid's version of the story. Right. And so when I think about the plumb line, it's, it's this, Hey, the message was really here. And throughout my whole life, I thought the message is over here. And so um, 
how, how do we, uh, you know, how do you ever get back to the point where you, you read the Bible and you say, this is what the real meaning was and I was mistaken. I, I, and I think that's what's kind of, it's kind of cool and also kind of frustrating about um, Christianity as a whole is that you're constantly learning new pieces of it that make you think, well, boy, the last time I, I thought about this, I was c- completely wrong. And uh, so that's a cool thing because you evolve like that, but it's also a frustrating thing because you think you had it figured out. I like the reference to, to Jonah because it's another prophet. In, in this case, not simply reluctant, but actively resistant. So you get another sense of how the prophets weren't choosing this. This wasn't their occupation. And I'm just going to give an example. We watched a three-part series on Greta Thunberg, uh, the climate activist as a teenager. And she's on the Asperger spectrum. And she said, I don't like getting in front of people. I don't want to get in front of people. That is not comfortable for me at all. But I have to. This is, this is my world. And if I don't do this, if I don't get out of my comfort zone and share what I know and what I see, it affects all of this. And so there's a, in my mind, in, in one avenue, one area, a, a modern day profit in, the, in terms of environment and human well-being. But that is also an example that when you're looking at whose voices are you listening to, what do they have to gain from this? And you look at Amos, you look at Jonah, Jonah, and Jonah's like, no, my enemy's going to convert to God. Are you kidding me? I don't want this. They're my enemy. You know, and Greta is this girl who's got to fight against the very nature of who she is in her Asperger's, uh, uh, and, but says, this is what I need to do and who I need to be. And when you find prophets, quote unquote, that uh, also want to sell you something and you know, you know, try to make uh, a living off this. Well, that's not really the true prophet because uh, the Bible has shown us that uh, prophets suffer under the, the, the message that they are given. They endure a lot of suffering under the message. They're not doing it for their own sake. And so it gives a genuineness. It shows the genuineness of their message. So. Hmm that God will use the weak things of this world to confound the wise and the strong. And that is, that is Jesus uh, in the new Testament shares that with us. And so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, cause I know there's, that's been a message throughout. I mean, I, I remember through churches, you know, it's always the, the weakest, the meekest that are, you know, brought up for or maybe not brought up first that's not the right phrase but they're usually the ones that are the ones you should be listening to I think a lot of the times and that I mean and I I think that too comes from when we've had discussions before of trying to see some of the true acts of God as you you see that in in modern day life that it's sometimes it is the the less fortunate or those that you know, aren't proclaiming themselves to be Christian that you see some of that from, because it, it, I feel like it's something that they don't think of themselves in, in the certain way, but they're, you know, God's working through them to really, you know, kind of guide us and kind of show us the right path, so to speak. So, so, okay. So who's the true Plumb line. So earlier today we were talking about um, we were talking about David Koresh and uh, who was it? John, you know, uh, Jim Jim Jones is that Jim it? Jim Jones, Guyana. Yeah, yeah. Jim Jones, and you know, and so clearly they weren't really plumb line kind of prophets. Uh, so how do you tell the difference, right? I mean, how do you tell the difference between someone who uh, is speaking the truth and someone who's you know, not and, and until it's too late. Right. And so this that idea of, like, you know, um, God sending messages into your life. Well, how do you figure out which one's accurate? Yeah. And, and I and I, you know, Philip, I think you've made a good point that that, you know, usually folks aren't doing it for their own profit. And so it's pretty easy to see the guy driving the Cadillac and, you know, preaching on Sunday and cashing big checks. Maybe that's not the guy who is really uh, in it for the right reason. Um, but how do you see the difference? And I think that's what people struggle with. And I think that's what people struggle with, um, with Christians in general is, 
uh, for every good Christian that might be out there saying, hey, I love you and care about you and I, I, I want to, you know, uh, help you in your life. There's also that person who says they're a Christian who is taking advantage of someone. And, and uh, what's the old adage? The people who drive people away from Christianity most are Christians themselves. Um, you know, when Christians get it wrong, if you will. And so how do you, how do you, I mean, isn't that the question, I guess, how do you figure out which one is really God giving you a message and which one is not? Yeah. I mean, well, the first you, you talking about, you know, the ones driving the Cadillacs, cashing in the check, you know, how my, my mind a lot of times, and I, I take this from my mom, <laughs> I get this from my mom is my mind goes to music a lot in, in songs. So it made me think of um, the Genesis song, uh, Jesus, He Knows Me, where it's all, you know, that that same same thing. But, I mean, that is one of those with, with trying to find out, you know, the right, who should we be listening to? You know, to me, the easy answer is, okay, look who's, whatever they're saying, or how they're going about it or something that is clearly kind of out of their comfort zone. It doesn't benefit them, but then that's also, you know, that can even be hard to tell. I feel like in a, in a lot of cases, especially if it's, you know, something that can be hidden or may not be surface level necessarily, at least when you first look at it. Yeah, I mean, you look at one of the worst things in society today, and I think I've said this in a couple of these of these uh, um, wrestling with the faith episodes, is really the talking heads in the in the you know on your phone and you know on uh, cable news and you know uh, that that act like they're really a news program when really it's just people's opinion and people mm -hmm. arguing and and they're making money off of that and so they're they're putting that propaganda out there. And for whatever their whatever their point of view is and and making money off of that and, and fighting against that is really hard to get you know to get through all that noise and so it's 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 complicated for us as a country and us as a human race to cut through all that nonsense mm -hmm. and get to the true messages of the world if you will or or the or truth you know to find truth it's not that easy to find anymore I think one thing, when you look at the prophets in the Old Testament, um, they lived and died in the prophetic message. They, they weren't above it or beyond it. They didn't deliver the message. They go, I'm, I'm heading back to the ranch on my jet plane. They, 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 were, they were going to, and usually the messages just weren't good, but they were going to be a part of that message. They were going to enjoy whatever that message was and enjoy is a pretty liberal. So they're not escaping. And, and that's where it comes to me, like looking at Jesus, Jesus, Jesus knew the suffering of humanity because he lived and walked amongst the suffering of, of people. He didn't try to escape it. And if we look at, does the message, uh, does it, does it gel with the life and message of Jesus and how Jesus approached the world? And, well, you know, Jesus has this opportunity to escape suffering. Does he escape suffering? He asks to, but says no. And he becomes in his life, the greatest of prophets. I'm going to give you a message and I'm going to live and die by it. And, um, and it's God's message. It's not, he says, I must do the father's will. And he's not even claiming it's his message. He's just saying, this is it. So the greatest prophet shows us how to, look for and listen to prophets in our day so so you're saying kind of compare like when we're looking at someone compare it to jesus and see if it's similar basically a way to kind of measure up how how Make, jesus treated of, people yeah what he did and what he said and how he treated people and yeah that makes sense i think it's a good point so jesus <laughs> is the plumb line this is before <laughs> jesus by the way this this passage yeah, but, but <laughs> you know if you look at it in that way that's the mm -hmm. that's he's the true plumb line of if you're going off of that you're, you're probably going in the wrong direction right. and he was a carpenter so i'm sure he knew what a plumb line was <laughs> <laughs> pun intended <laughs> and i was gonna say in, in with, with trying to match up i mean obviously one of the things i've constantly gone back to it 
my my one word summarization of you know the message is love like love period like no no asterisk on love love everybody except for blank so to me that's as we also look at some of these you know quote unquote prophets of today is is that message promoting love in some some form or another to everybody else I mean, because Philip, you were mentioning um, Greta earlier and, you know, the message of trying to save the environment is, to me, is <laughs> trying to show love for everybody. It's like we're all mm-hmm. living here. I mean, granted, technology may be at the point in the next few decades, you know, we could be living on Mars or something, but we're further out. But that it's still, you know, we're still going to be here and trying to save that to me is showing love for everybody and trying to, you know, protect everybody. So that, that could be another way as, as you're trying to trying to line things up with what you may or may be seeing or reading, you know, today's, today's news and social media and everything else is, is that lining up with Jesus and is it lining up with that message of, of love? Wow. That's a, Love is the plumb line. Love is the plumb line. That's a great summary. There. I like that, Adam. <laughs> I, I, think, know, I like that, Evan. That's awesome. I, I think we've got our, our title for the episode. <laughs> Love is the plumb line. Love, Love is the plumb line. All right, Ben, make sure you put that in. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure. I'll, I'll add that to the note when I send everything to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, with that, what's our, what's our marching orders there, Evan? <laughs> So I, I think maybe where previously it's been kind of active stuff of, um, you know, going out and either trying to, you know, acknowledge others around you or trying to take time to kind of silence, silence yourself to be able to hear. I think this is one that could be as, as you're wading through all, all the media, social media, news, everything like that. Just keep keep that that uh, plumb line of love in your mind. Uh, that as as you're reading stuff, and you know, before obviously, like we've said, you can you can get different sides of the stories from what any outlet you go to. Is you know, use that as your guiding point to help, and I think that'll help us cut through a lot of that negativity we've talked about before. That's you know, pervasive and and media. So keep that plumb line in mind <laughs> as, as you wade your way and wrestle your way through the world. Um, yeah. So, so again, we've, uh, you can find us through various social medias. If you've liked this podcast, if you're on YouTube, uh, subscribe so you can see more as well as uh, see more of these episodes, as well as our services that we stream and post online, um, like and, and comment. We'd love to hear back from you. Um, if you're listening to on, on the podcast, you can find us on various social medias, Facebook, uh, Instagram, some of those at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Westlake, Ohio. If you're in the area, we'd love to actually see you in person. If you get the chance to come visit our church and you see one of us there, don't hesitate to come up and talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and Philip, thank you for joining us uh, for this, uh, to talk through all this and have a great weekend, everybody, or great week and keep wrestling everyone. Mm-hmm.